Hi, my name is Melissa Johnson. I am a research biologist at the Daniel K. Anoy U.S. Pacific Basin Agricultural Research Center in Hilo, Hawaii. Today I'll be discussing how to optimize pesticide applications for coffeeberry borer in Hawaii. My talk will be split into two sections today. The first half will focus on coffeeberry borer population dynamics on Hawaii Island and how we can use information on CBV dynamics to inform location-specific pesticide applications. The second half of my talk will discuss vertical and temporal flight patterns of CBV in Hawaii. Coffeeberry borer is the world's most serious insect pest of coffee, causing an estimated $500 million in annual damages worldwide. The adult females will bore tunnels into the coffee bean where they will reproduce, and the developing larvae feed on the endosperm tissue. This is what causes decreases in both yields and quality of coffee. The male and female siblings mate within the natal berry. The males will die and the females will leave that berry and fly in search of a new berry to infest. Because their entire life cycle is cryptic and protected within the bean, it is critical that we time pesticide sprays with peaks in CBB vulnerability. This means when the females are out, flying around and are exposed. CBB has been in Hawaii for more than a decade now. It was first detected in the Kona growing region in 2010, quickly spread to Kau by 2011, to Puna in 2012, and up to Hamakua in 2013. In the years that followed, it spread to the neighboring islands of Maui 2015, Lonai in 2016, Oahu in 2014, and lastly to Kauai in 2020. There are many different challenges to implementing the Integrated Pest Management Plan for Coffee Berry Boar in Hawaii. Firstly, our landscape is extremely variable. We grow coffee from sea level all the way up to more than 2,000 feet in elevation. Our cultural practices vary among farms. For example, different pruning practices are employed at different farms. Some farms, for example, in Kona might strip pick while others in Kau'u may not. Um, our production and labor costs are extremely high across the islands, and we are always in a consistently severe labor shortage. The existing set of IPM recommendations for coffee berry borer in Hawaii include a number of practices which must be used in combination for optimal control. These include pruning, monitoring using either alcohol baited traps or the 30 tree sampling method, biopesticide sprays of Bavaria bassiana, which are available commercially as Botanigard or Mycotrol, sanitation, including multiple sanitation picks throughout the season, frequent and efficient harvesting, and a strip pick at the end of the season to remove any remaining berries on the trees. The current IPM for CBB has a single set of recommendations for the entire state. This is likely a problem because coffee is grown across a highly variable landscape and CBB population dynamics are likely to vary across time and space in Hawaii. The aim of the study was to determine if spray recommendations should be customized to specific locations based on differences in environmental variables, pest pressure, fruit availability, and management practices. In 2016, we initiated an area-wide CBB monitoring program on Hawaii Island. Data was collected bi-weekly from 14 commercial coffee farms, eight in Kona and six in Kau. Farm size varied, although the majority were from small family-owned operations, we did collect data from a couple of medium-sized farms and one large farm. The farms spanned an elevation gradient of around 200 to 800 meters, and data was collected over a three-year period. We used alcohol-baited traps to estimate CBB flight activity. We also collected data on fruit and flower phenology. Information on infestation was taken using, using a modified version of the 30 tree sampling method. We collected infested berries and classified them as in the A, B, or C, D position. We also collected information from the farmers on their management practices and also installed weather stations at each farm. We observed that temperatures in Kona were on average two degrees higher than those in Kau. We also observed higher temperatures at low and mid elevations compared to high elevations. 
We observed that humidity in Kau was about 5% higher than that in Kona. We also observed significantly different relative humidity across elevations, with low elevation farms being 84% on average, mid elevation farms being 87% on average, and high elevation farms being 91% on average. Two week rainfall totals in Kau were nearly twice as high as those in Kona. We also observed higher rainfall at high elevations compared to low and mid elevations. We observed no significant difference in coffee fruit production between Kona and Kau. However, we did observe higher production at low and mid elevations compared to high elevations. Based on trap catch, we found larger CBD populations in Kona versus Kau. We also found larger CBD populations at low elevations compared to mid and high elevations. For fruit infestation, we found no significant difference between Kona or Kau. We also found no significant difference between elevations in terms of infestation. We found that the peak in AB Alive occurred earlier in the season for Kona compared to Kau farms. We also found that the peak in AB Alive occurred earlier for low and mid elevations relative to high elevations. We conducted a series of correlation analyses to determine which of these factors are driving infestation. We found that pest pressure and air temperature have a positive effect on infestation, likely because CBB develop faster at higher temperatures. We also found that fruit availability has a negative effect on infestation with peaks and in infestation occurring when there are very few berries available. Based on the data collected in Hawaii on trap catch, fruit production, infestation, and AB position, we created a location-optimized spray schedule. This will allow growers to determine when the best times to spray are depending on where their farm is located. There are two ways to interpret this chart. If interpreted by color, the red indicates critical times to spray, orange ind indicates important times to spray, yellow indicates optional times to spray, and white indicates times when it's not necessary to spray. Each month is scored out of a possible 24 points. The closer the score is to 24, the more important that time is to spray. If we look across this chart, we see that for Kona, three to seven sprays are optimal for low elevation farms four to five sprays are optimal for mid elevation farms and two to three sprays are optimal for high elevation farms. For Kau, two to eight sprays are optimal for low elevations, three to six sprays for mid elevations and zero to four sprays for high elevations. We also find that the optimal spray window for controlling CBB in Kau is slightly longer relative to that in Kona, reflecting the year round season. In general, the number of sprays needed to control CBB decreases with increasing elevation. In summary, we observe fundamental differences in CBB population dynamics, plant phenology, and weather across the coffee growing landscape on Hawaii Island. Spray decisions should be based not only on infestation levels and CBB position, but they should also include information on coffee plant phenology and pest pressure. Instead of a one-size-fits-all strategy for IPM of CBB in Hawaii, we suggest that management should be tailored to the conditions of the specific growing location. Growers at low elevations and in regions with a year-round growing season will need to conduct more frequent sprays relative to growers at mid and high elevations and in regions with a distinct dry season. Our study is the first to show that one to two sprays conducted during the main harvest would be beneficial for low elevation farms and those farms with a year round season, particularly when fruit loads are high. Compared to the existing IPM recommendations, sprays could be reduced by 33 to 42% for low elevations, 33 to 44% for mid elevations, and 67 to 75% for high elevations. We're hoping that this information will provide growers with a better understanding of when sprays should occur during the season to maximize benefits based on peak CBB flight times and the availability of fruit. For the second half of my talk, I'll be discussing data on vertical and temporal flight patterns in CBB on Hawaii Island, 
which could be used to optimize spray timing and target areas within the coffee tree which may be more susceptible to CVV. We estimated the vertical distribution of CVV females using traps that had one meter intervals up to five meters in height at four farms. We also quantified CVB infestation in the low, mid, and high canopy and documented fruit availability. Temporal flight patterns were estimated using timer traps and correlation analyses were conducted to determine the relationship between the timing of daily flight and weather variables. For vertical flight patterns, we found that the one meter trap caught significantly higher numbers of CVB relative to traps set at all other heights. This result was consistent for all four farms. We found that the pattern of CBB flying at one meter in height held consistently throughout the year regardless of fruit availability or pest pressure. We also found for tree infestation that there were significantly higher numbers of infested berries at low branches compared to high branches. Using timer traps, we found that CBB flight peaked from 12 to 4 p.m. across all four farms. We also observed that CVB flight increased with increasing air temperature, increasing wind speed, and decreasing relative humidity. Across four study sites, we looked at how high CVB fly throughout the growing season and found that 77 to 84 percent of trap catch was at one meter in height, 11 to 20 percent was at two meters in height, and only one to four percent was at three to five meters in height. We also observed significantly higher fruit infestation in low branches relative to high branches. Flight height remained the same year round regardless of fruit availability and pest pressure. We also observed that CBB flew in low numbers during the day and night, but that they peaked from 12 to 4 p.m. Daily flight was positively correlated with an increase in air temperature and wind speed and negatively correlated with an increase in relative humidity. We suggest that pesticide sprays should target low to mid-level branches at one to two meters in height and should aim to be conducted in the early afternoon when CBB are actively flying and are most vulnerable to pesticide sprays. We would like to thank the many coffee growers that provided access to their fields and management records for the duration of these projects. We'd also like to thank the many technicians that offered field and lab support the collaborators that offered project consultation and suggestions, and the USDA for funding. I'd also like to thank each of you for your time and attention, and I'm happy to answer any questions.